and we are live. Hello everybody and welcome to my daily message. We are getting increasingly organized here. Um, I'm actually, I've actually worked out a way to repurpose this so it goes direct to SoundCloud um, as well as being here on Instagram and on Facebook Live. So um, yeah, how are you all going? I hope you're okay. I believe it's Monday, although I can't be sure. Um, I know it's not the weekend because I'm dressed. <laughs> I decided not to uh, bother getting dressed on the weekend. I don't know about you, but I just thought, nah, not going to get dressed. Just going to be in my PJs. Um, apart from, you know, having the odd wash. So uh, how are you doing? I'm not sure. I think we're on about day 16 of quarantine here in my family. Uh, what are you up to? And also, where are you? Hi, Isabel from Brighton. Um, yeah. So what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about, we're going to do three things. For a start, we are going to uh, talk about the move of Saturn into Aquarius, which we've just touched on really, really lightly. We are going to talk about the fact that Mars is about to move into Aquarius as well. So Saturn in Aquarius, Mars in Aquarius, what that means. And we're also going to talk about the Jupiter-Pluto connection um, because someone was talking, asked me about that and they were, they were a bit frightened. And the last thing I want to do is for anyone to be scared. Hello, everybody. Hello from Canada. Hello from Melbourne. Another person from Canada. Um, ah, Shilpa has me in SoundCloud. You will get a recording of this. Will we get the recording of the Taurus Rising workshop from last week? Ah, you should have that. Please contact support at yasmabolan.com. Um, who else have we got? Hello from Canberra, says Mariana, Fiona from Adelaide. All right, so I'm actually going to start with three charts, okay? Just three alms. Now, why am I doing this? Well, for one thing, because I'm re still reading that book, Sound Medicine by Dr. Cool Reed Chowdhury, and I'm obsessed with mantra right now. And I've just done my 20 minutes of chanting that I do before I do this. And uh, it's just such a powerful process. You know, I've been reading about the history of mantra and, you know, it seems to date back about 8,000 years. And OM, A-U-M or O-M, however you want to spell it, is really like the seed mantra of all seed mantras. So wherever you are, assuming you're in lockdown, and if you're not in lockdown um, and you're one of the key workers out there, we really extend our gratitude to you. Um, I know a lot's been made about the people in the healthcare system and I'm so grateful to them. Uh, also though, I don't think we've made enough of people like, you know, the supermarket workers and the delivery people who are still keeping life functioning as we go through this strange period. So let's all get together and chant. If you've ever done a yoga class, it's like the OM you do at the start or the end of the yoga class, O-M or A-U-M, depending on how you want to say it. If you can't do it out loud because of where you are, that's fine. Just do it silently in your head. In fact, mantra in your head is just as powerful, if not more powerful, according to my teacher, Narayani Yama. Um, but we're going to do this out loud. I wish I could hear you all, but I know you are all over the world. Um, I've got people in Australia, America, England, all over the world. We are going to send this all out for healing to the world, okay? and in gratitude to the people who are helping keep the world running at this time. And I'm, I'm not talking about the governments, <laughs> but good luck to them as well. I'm actually talking about the healthcare workers, the supermarket workers, the delivery people, the people who are helping us get through this cycle, okay? Because what they're doing is really brave, in my humble opinion. Let's go. Oh. Oh. 
It's a very powerful mantra. Okay, so let's talk about the fact that Saturn has moved into Aquarius. And by the way, I'm going to try and keep today's chat to half an hour, okay? Um, the fact that Saturn has moved into Aquarius. Now, I touched on this briefly last week, but I want to talk about it a little bit more. And what I did is before I came on air, I looked at my trusty book, which is called Keywords for Astrology by Bunzaf and Hebler. It's an amazing book that I've had for about 20 years. Um, for those of you watching on Instagram or Facebook, you can see it's completely wrecked. And I actually think this is my second copy and it's already wrecked. It's just so inspirational. Now, what does it say for Saturn in Aquarius? It's so apt. Bearing in mind, Saturn moved into Aquarius, I mean, just in the last week or two, okay? It's about, in a kind of a negative sense, it's about the fear of loneliness. Okay, now why? Because Saturn is about fear. And Aquarius is about humanity. Okay, Saturn is about isolation. And Aquarius is about humanity. As I said last week, you can't make this stuff up. The fear of being deserted. Now that's a really big one. Because, you know, there are lots of people out there who are isolated alone at the moment. And of course, you know, I hope they're all getting on Zoom or WhatsApp or Facebook or whatever. And I know people are having dinner together over Zoom. We've been having a couple of parties with friends, which has been great fun on Friday night and Saturday night. But, you know, I have a beloved uncle at the moment who's being treated for an illness in Malta. And he's alone because he lives alone, uh, his, his, uh, he, his child doesn't live with him um, because his child's grown up and I'm pretty sure that his child now can't go and see him because, uh, you know, because he can't risk taking in the coronavirus to my uncle. So when we do our chanting today, we're going to send out the energy of healing to anybody who's feeling socially isolated like my uncle, anyone in your life, you know, Saturn in Aquarius, the fear of being abandoned, okay? Now, what is the positive side of this Saturn in Aquarius? I think probably the number one thing is lessons, that's Saturn, because Saturn is the teacher of the zodiac, lessons for humanity. And what have we learned? Well, obviously, one of the big things we've learned is that we don't need to use all the industrial energy we are constantly using, because here we all are. I'm not saying we should all be stuck at home forever, but here we are healing the world environmentally because we're not out there doing stuff. Now, obviously, this virus is a is a tragedy for, for many people, but it can also help the world, so it seems. So we need to keep in mind the positive things that are happening now. Um, you know, there's one picture during the rounds, which I believe is fact, which is about the fact that um, apparently in Venice, you can see fish in the, in the waterways, whatever they're called. You can see fish in there for the first time in years because the water's cleared because people aren't zooming up and down all the time. I mean, you know, the, as I said yesterday, the ozone layer is healing. Okay, so in the midst of all the compassion that we have for the people who are unwell, you know, let's think about what we do want. What we do want is to heal the planet during this time. You know, and we're all staying at home and having so much more time to reflect. Now, obviously, for some people, that's going to be a problem. There's going to be people with mental health issues coming up. And of course, we need to be compassionate with those people in our lives who need help. But at the same time, we can use this time to meditate and to chant and to do yoga in a way that we haven't had time to do that for a very, very long time. So there's that. Now, then there's also Mars moving into Aquarius, which is just about to happen. And I'm going to just say, because honestly, I'm, I know I'm very well known for being very optimistic and upbeat. However, Mars moving into Aquarius can also mean 
especially because Saturn's already in there, civil unrest, you know, and the government cracking down even harder. Like in France right now, if you want to go out to the shop, you have to download something off the internet. You have to fill it out about the time you left the house and what you're planning to do. And you walk out to the supermarket and you could get stopped by the police and the police will say, what are you? I won't do the French accent. What are you doing? Qu'est-ce que vous faites? And uh, you have to give your piece of paper which shows, you know, that you've left the house less than one hour ago and that you're going to the supermarket. And there could be more of that happening now as Mars heads for Saturn, okay, around the world. Um, and it can also be, you know, anti-establishment um, feeling rising up. And I really hope we're not going to see that. But, you know, it can be people kicking back against the authoritarian stance that the government obviously feels it needs to take. I don't know if it's right, right or wrong, but that's what's happening. And, uh, you know, we, we need to be really careful. So if you have children that you know are going stir crazy and thinking of doing stupid things, you know, in your role as a parent, speak to them with love, you know, remind them how much you love them and you want to be well. Um, my son, Louis, who's 13, was telling me that there's videos on YouTube of teenagers kind of going out in public in secret and filming themselves like it's the latest dare is to, you know, the latest internet dare is to go out there and, you know, be out in the world when, when we all know that we, we shouldn't be out in the world. It's not safe. And you go out in the world and you take, if you get COVID-19, you take it home. So, you know, if you have children, talk to them. You know, and that can be Mars and Saturn, but there's nothing to be scared of per se, as long as we keep learning the lessons. And someone was saying, oh gosh, this Jupiter-Pluto thing sounds awful. I was talking about the other day. Look, it can be a time of amplifying uh, what's going on. And of course, that is potentially a negative, but if you can possibly stay home, you should be fine. Jupiter-Pluto can also be that there's finally some good news regarding the virus, okay? So again, focus on what you do want and don't think about what you don't want. I have deleted, I won't say which ones, but I've deleted a couple of apps off my phone of uh, news channels that I often look up on the phone, on my phone, because I love news. I'm an ex-journalist, you know, I'm always wanting to see the latest news. But some of them are so sensationalist and uh, constantly just barraging us with fear that I've deleted them off my phone so that for now, I'll, I might put them back on after we come out of this, but you know, we might not come out of this for a couple of months, so they're saying. So I'll put them back on in a couple of months maybe. But I've just taken them off my phone. I'm not, I don't, as Colette Baron reed has been calling it, don't give in to the fear virus because, you know, as some famous American president once said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself because it's fear will lower your immune system. <laughs> I mean, literally, look it up, you know, negative feelings like fear will lower the immune system. So how much more reason do you need to stay positive? Okay, so now we're going to do a little bit of chanting. I hope that's reassured people. Um, I'm just seeing if there's any messages here. Wishing everyone wellness, yes. And you know, meditation, love not fear, says Veronica, yes. And somebody else said up there about meditation. Meditation is the number one thing we can do for ourselves. Why? Because meditation adjusts us. You know, and chanting adjusts us. It brings us back into balance. So a regular, a daily chant with me here, or a regular medita daily meditation at home, you know, one of the best things you can do is a bit of yoga and then a meditation. I don't know if you know, but yoga was actually initially kind of a way to prepare the physical body for meditation. You know, so if you go, if you go to the ancient um, yoga schools in India, I went to one and, uh, you know, basically yoga is preparation for meditation. So you do your yoga. I did some bit of yogic stretching before I came on here today and you do your yoga and then you and then your body is prepared to meditate. And when you meditate, you're basically getting the left and right hand sides of your brain back into balance so important and you know another thing about saturn in aquarius saturn is discipline and aquarius is humanity so imagine if if humanity became disciplined in good ways you know saturn is fear and humanity 
you know, Aquarius is humanity. So Saturn in Aquarius can mean the whole world in fear. Or it can mean, you know, people disciplining themselves with things like yoga and meditation and chanting. I mean, what else are you going to do? You can't watch Netflix all day. You might as well advance yourself on your spiritual journey. That's what I think. And, you know, read some amazing books. Read some amazing books. That's such a good thing to do right now as well. Okay, so we're going to chant. We're going to do the chant that we've been doing every day, which is the one from my ashram in India. And uh, for the people who are listening on SoundCloud, I'll say it. But those of you watching, here it is written down. So it's Om Cream, which is the beige mantra for the goddess Kali, who is the goddess we're invoking to destroy fear, negativity and the virus. Maha Kali, that's Mother Kali. Sarva Rogam Nasi Nasi. Now this has come from my Indian teacher Narani Amar in India. And we've been asked that when we say Nasi Nasi, we imagine the virus or any negativity at all, any disease being destroyed, okay? So we're gonna do it nine times, okay? Just ring the bell. And then afterwards we'll sit with the energy, okay? So if you're able to chant it out loud, do so. Otherwise you can just chant it quietly in your head. If you've got headphones handy, Stick him in, baby. Here we go. Om Cream Mahakali Sarvarogam Nasi Nasi. Om Cream Mahakali Sarvarogam Nasi Nasi 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 just sit with the energy and just send the energy of healing out to your family your friends, to your community, to your city, to your country, into the world. now I want you to bring to mind someone in your life who really needs healing right now and if you don't have anyone please bring my uncle to mind my uncle Minnie 
that's what I call him. And just send a healing blue light to that person. And just say silently or out loud, you are healed, you are healed, you are healed. Hand between the breasts, so be it. I'm going to finish with my chant three times to the goddess Narayani, the goddess for these times of Kali Yuga. Oh, om namo Narayani. Oh, om namo So, oh, all right, well, the cards appeared. I was going to, um, oh, here's an interesting question actually from Jay. Let's have a look. Looking for guidance, can we turn the anti-establishment vibes into a positive? Like if you're feeling you've given your creative energy to a company and been let go made redundant and how do you turn that into power for yourself okay all right so jay that's a really interesting question and that's affecting a lot of people right now and i think the thing is is to think about how you can do work that's going to help the world okay now that might seem really facile but Saturn in Aquarius is also about doing work that helps the world. So what can you do? You know, I'm doing this. This is my attempt to help people. You know, I said to my husband today, I'm not focusing on my, my any fears I have around this. You know, I'm, that's why I've deleted those news apps. I'm focusing on what I can do. And what I can do is I can show up here. What can you do, you know? What can you do? And of course, if you can get paid for what you do, I mean, I'm doing these for free, but I still have, you know, paid programs running. But if you can do stuff for free, that is brilliant. And then also think about what can you do that's gonna help people. And you know, one thing we've got here in, in London, and I know this isn't gonna to apply to everybody because if you're a very sort of, you know, highly qualified, I don't know, accountant or librarian or, you know something like that obviously it's not going to be for everybody but for a lot of there's a lot of work out there in the moment for people working in deliveries you know because nobody's going shopping to the supermarket you know so here in England we have Sainsbury's Waitrose Tesco's they all have delivery orders backed up three weeks you know like they need drivers I don't know if they've, they've got as many as they can take but they need drivers because they're not getting it all done you know, there is work around. And uh, Jay, you know, I'm so sorry that if you've been made redundant, you didn't actually say, but you need to look at this as, you know, it's so easy for me to say this, but it is true. As time goes on, you will start to understand what this was all about, I'm pretty sure. I said it a few times now, I think in a year's time, we're gonna see lots of stories coming out of people who started businesses under this coronavirus period who, you know, change the world and, you know, and maybe make themselves a lot of money in the process, which they can also give back. You know, if you're making money at the moment in these times, give some money back. We are doing that. Give some money back to the people who are helping feed people, whether it's food banks in England or Australia or America, or you want to give money to another country, a third world country. You know, in India, they're having a lot of trouble. I know that because I'm quite closely connected to India. 
All right, so we have a card which jumped out. So this is the second time this card has come up that I've been doing these, and it's only about the second or third time I've used these cards. And it's a little bit of a weird card to get at this time because obviously we don't want to take any risks with our health. But the card is Freya, be bold. Unleash your adventurous side and be daring. Okay, now I don't think that means go outside and risk giving or getting COVID-19. However, I think what it does mean is in the context of what we're saying is be bold in what you can offer the world or what you can do for the world. You know, look after your health, but what can you do for people? What can you do at this time? Take bold action in the direction of your heart's desire. Success comes not from timidity, but from committing yourself fully to realising your dream. Okay, this is actually really applicable to you, Jay, and to everybody who's thinking about what can I do at the moment with this lockdown. Hold the clear intention of success and it shall come about. Okay? And it says, be sure to celebrate your success with a party, which you can do online. We've had parties online. Okie dokie. Well, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. As I said, if you want to hear it back, if you miss part of it, it's now on SoundCloud every day, hopefully, if my uh, software's working. Lots and lots of love. <laughs>